Indeed. So now um, uh, over the past month, as uh, folks have mentioned, we've been surveying the canoe membership um, and data users about their priorities and ideas for canoe as we move forward. Um, so this next presentation by Danny Duaron uh, is going to provide us a high level summary of those responses. Um, Danny is a research associate at the Respiratory Epidemiology and Clinical Research Unit of McGill University Health Centre in Montreal. Uh, he's the Chief Operating Officer of the Canadian Cohort of Obstructive Lung Disease, the CANCO Cohort. And in his spare time, he's the Data Linkage Lead and Special Projects Manager for CANOE. So Danny, I'm going to ask you to try to get it done in 10. <laughs> okay, I'll do my best. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. Yes, okay. All right, so um, before we start the panel discussion on, on CANOE's future and uh, strategic planning process, um, I'll present results of the uh, pre-AGM survey that I hope that most of you have uh, filled. So to begin, I'll give a, an overview of this online survey uh, that was sent to you. So in terms of object objectives, um, the questionnaire really aimed to engage CANOE membership and uh, collaborators on how you saw the future of a canoe-like nonprofit. Um, specifically, we wanted to know what people thought were the gaps that could be filled by canoe in the environmental health research landscape in Canada going forward. And um, we also wanted uh, canoe members uh, to help us prioritize roles and activities to take on. And lastly, uh, we wanted to, um, to you to help us identify challenges uh, to anticipate and opportunities to leverage in thinking about Canoe's future as a nonprofit organization. So the survey was sent to around 500 individuals, including uh, Canoe members uh, registered to our mailing list, uh, data users, uh, health data stewards, and other collaborators. So in total, 80 individuals uh, answered our survey. Um, among these, two out of three uh, respondents were um, academic researchers, and one in five were students. Uh, government employees and NGO uh, staff uh, represented 8% of respondents each. And in terms of their past involvement with CANOE, uh, the vast majority, so 70%, of respondents had used canoe data in the past. Um, one in five respondents were canoe team members, advisors and directors, and, um, and one in 10 were health data stewards with uh, whom canoe staff has worked to uh, link and provide pre-linked health and environmental data sets to the research community. So the first question we asked uh, related to the uh, gaps that could be filled by a canoe-like uh, nonprofit organization. And um, in this question, we gave respondents five examples of the types of organizations a canoe could, could become. So the first response option, um, which is here, Data Hub, essentially represents a continuity of what, what uh, Canoe has done over the past five years. So a Data Hub that develops, curates, uh, and disseminates environmental exposure and built environment data to the research com community. Secondly, we proposed uh, establishing a training center focusing on post-secondary training in uh, data science and built environment uh, exposure modeling and monitoring. Uh, third, uh, we uh, proposed a think tank that, uh, that collates um, and, and consolidates knowledge on environmental uh, health and uh, uh, provides advice to policymakers and planners. Uh, fourth, we propose a knowledge translation hub um, for um, urban environmental health. And so this organization would essentially uh, disseminate research results to different audiences. And lastly, we, we propose what we call the a research accelerator organization um, that would attract and disseminate research funds from non tri council so non-academic uh, funding sources. So almost all uh, survey respondents, 95% uh, saw uh, the data hub as either uh, important or very important in filling a gap. Uh, so this showed us that what we've been doing um, over the past five years really answers an important uh, need for Canadian researchers. 
uh, and secondly, the, the think tank and knowledge translation hubs uh, came in second in terms of, of popula uh, popularity with about um, three out of four respondents considering these roles as either important or very important in uh, filling gaps in the current landscape. Uh, we also gave individuals the opportunity to tell us uh, what other roles Canoe could fill, and here are some examples. So first, uh, some respondents highlighted that given the urgency in uh, addressing climate change, Canoe should position itself um, in terms of the roles it can play in providing data, analytics, platforms, and expertise to mitigate and uh, adapt to climate change. Secondly, um, there was also interest in positioning Canoe as a connector between governmental organizations at different levels, um, NGOs and, uh, and academia, as well as a networker uh, linking researchers and research teams with uh, similar interests. And lastly, uh, survey respondents mentioned Canoe could become a public education organization that communicates uh, environmental health uh, science and disseminates information to the public in ways that are that are easy to, to understand. I also wanted to highlight uh, one important comment uh, that we got and that I think we should keep in mind in thinking about the future of Canoe. Uh, and that's the need to be strategic and to not scatter our efforts or our resources to, by, by trying to fill too many roles. Um, so we also asked about uh, the type of day-to-day -day activities we should pursue as a nonprofit, and uh, of the options uh, we uh, provided, 85% of uh, respondents thought that expert webinars should be prioritized. Survey respondents also uh, were favorable to newsletters, uh, annual general meetings, and a, a social media presence, but uh, perhaps to a lesser extent to the um, webinars uh, like the ones we've been hosting in the past couple of years. Um, next, we asked uh, what you found uh, would be the main benefits of uh, keeping Canoe or a Canoe-like uh, organization going. And here we were looking uh, to learn about what our members uh, perceived as personal or prof uh, professional benefits of having uh, an organization like Canoe. And two themes um, generally came out. So first, as you can see from the comments that I pasted here on the left of this slide, uh, there was consensus regarding the value of Canoe uh, as a reliable environmental exposure data source. And people really seem to, to see the value of Canoe in providing environmental exposure data uh, to researchers and linking it to health databases to, uh, to facilitate environmental health research. And secondly, people felt that ensuring the sustainability of Canoe would provide additional opportunities for, for connecting with researchers and experts in environmental health and uh, would help them establish uh, collaborations in the future. So from, from these responses that we, we received, we see that Canoe should continue to play its role uh, as a data clearinghouse and as a networking body for environmental health research in Canada. Winding down now, uh, we asked participants about what they saw as the main challenges and opportunities to creating healthy, sustainable cities in the coming decade. Uh, so in terms of uh, challenges, four themes came out. Um, firstly, many respondents highlighted uh, the lack of political will to change things as a barrier uh, to creating healthy, uh, sustainable cities. Um, secondly, environmental inequity uh, was uh, also highlighted as a, as a challenge. Uh, so many of you mentioned the need to balance um, and integrate social, economic, cultural, and ecological perspectives given inequalities in health and global challenges such as climate change. Um, another challenge that came up was the lack of coordination across actors. Um, so respondents highlighted the fact that different actors at different um, levels of governments and within uh, NGO and, and academic communities uh, tend to work in silos and that multiple uh, related issues are are typically not addressed concurrently. 
And uh, lastly, a lack of actionable uh, evidence was mentioned as a, as, a, as a challenge. So people found that evidence and especially policy relevant evidence um, is not readily available to affect, affect change. So it was mentioned that uh, the development of cost benefit uh, tools for decision making and local economic evaluations of health impacts from environmental exposures could, could help address this challenge. Um, in terms of potential opportunities that can be leveraged to promote healthy, sustainable cities, a large number of respondents felt that the COVID-19 pandemic uh, represented such an opportunity given the drastic change uh, that it brought about in terms of how we live in our cities and interact with them. So examples such as reduce uh, traffic related air pollution and an increased demand for active transportation options and uh, green spaces and parks were mentioned. And uh, respondents also highlighted the need to take advantage of the renewed uh, focus on public health uh, during the pandemic in order to promote healthy cities. Uh, secondly, uh, respondents saw an opportunity to leverage healthy and sustainable city design by highlighting the multiple health co-benefits of adapting and mitigating uh, uh, climate change. And third, what was seen as a challenge in the previous slide that I just showed uh, in terms of multi-actor uh, coordination was also mentioned as an opportunity uh, by a few respondents. So um, in that uh, multi-disciplinary and multi-sectoral collaborations could effectively help promote healthy cities uh, in the coming decade. So I'll just finish with this last slide and I'll uh, pass it over to uh, the panel. And this last slide shows some of the key needs identified by uh, survey respondents uh, for urban environmental health research in Canada that I'm hoping that the uh, panelists can, can explore a bit further during the discussion. So again, climate change is mentioned, inequalities in, in health and environmental inequalities, uh, practice uh, relevant research. Uh, some um, respondents mentioned the lack of uh, national uh, level noise pollution data, uh, um, the ability for the public to contribute uh, to data collection, as well as a, a, a better dissemination of information uh, to the public. And lastly, uh, CANU members also uh, mentioned the need for continued access and linkage of exposure data to uh, support environmental research in Canada. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you uh, everyone for, for your input. And I'll also mention that we'll, we'll keep the, uh, the survey open for, for a couple more days. Uh, so if you haven't uh, filled it out yet, uh, you have the chance to do it.